There are many good pickup trucks that are still in good operational condition from 10 and 20 years ago that are for sale at reasonable prices in the used vehicle market. The thing is to avoid costly repairs and avoid models that are prone to rusting away as labor costs are high in the West, and therefore that bargain price can become a headache if you get sucked into a trap. The cost of ownership is as different as night and day. One can be fixed with a multimeter and a basic set of hand tools, the other requires engine removal for almost anything. Same deal with rust out, it's expensive to deal with. Chevy Colorado Speaking of the S10, its replacement the Colorado is good mechanically but the frames and lower rocker areas are prone to rust in areas where lots of salt are used to maintain the roadways during inclement weather. If you are going to buy one, do it in a location that wasn't prone to snow and ice. The mechanicals of this truck seems fine, but the pictures of rust out in the northern states reminds you of a bygone era before Canada forced the issue of rust worthiness which caused the manufacturers to start using things like dipping the body panels in galvanizing compounds and using composites where possible. 1990s mid-2000s Dodge full-size light trucks. These trucks are known for rocker panel rust. Like most Chrysler products from that era, their electrical wiring seems prone to fouling from electrolysis which is also a pain in the butt to deal with. The one good thing about these models is there is a large store of usable parts in the wrecking yards because of rust and wiring issues which cause the prior owners to dump these things long before the engines quit. Keep the mileage of your prospect by to under 150k and you would probably be okay. The short answer is this is not the truck where you are going to be bragging you drove it up to 300,000 miles with only a few repairs. It's simply not in the cards for this one. Whether it's a 1,500 or a 3,500 it makes no difference. Early 2000s Nissan Frontier These trucks are so-so mechanically. Definitely not the best or the worst in reliability. Where they suck, is their affinity for electrolysis all over the thing. Body rust isn't significant in the cases we know of, however, the battery cable connections, as well as the brake calipers and wiring connections, are under constant attack from corrosion. That's an insidious form of rust because the fun starts when your brakes lock up as the calipers seize or the clutch pedal goes to the floor because the third master cylinder failed in 18 months due to pitting. Maybe the engine will surge because it's getting erroneous sensor parameters because the computer can't get a proper read from its inputs. If it's over 150k, consider this one suspect. Generation 2 and 3 Ford Bronco The mechanicals of these trucks didn't permit high mileage longevity. But should you find one, be suspect because they were holdovers before Ford got serious about rustproofing. By the mid-80s Ford had dramatically improved its corrosion resistance on models designed from then on. This one, however, was designed in the late 70s and the improvements in that area weren't incorporated. You may be okay with one built after 1987 as they started making changes to those. It's up to you as to how you would deal with their ugly interiors and bing-bong interior alarms that annoy you. Chevrolet Silverado GMC Sierra 1998-2012 This one should see a website such as Letgo or Craigslist listing you as a seller. Sorry, but these things had great drivelines, much improved over their predecessors, but the bodies fail on these. Usually, these trucks are high mileage by the time you find them, and they only die above 250k unless not taken care of. However, the bodies are prone to rust around the wool wells and lower rockers. If it's a good running southern truck, consider buying it. If that thing saw winter usage in the rust belt, look elsewhere to buy it. Mitsubishi L200 According to a popular car buyer website, 2011 models were having warranty repairs for rust along the foot trails after less than 13 months ownership. Car Buyer UK Com has several ratings for post-2011 models claiming only fuel consumption and lower body and chassis rust issues as the only major complaints among half of the reporting owners. Basically, if you read between the lines you can probably deduce this truck is only rust-proof to the level of a typical Japanese world market vehicle. So if you are in Africa, Australia or Mexico it's probably a safe buy as a used vehicle. If you are in a northern area, buyer beware. Toyota Tundra and Tacoma model years 2005-2008 According to Forbes, Com, Toyota covered 2005 to 10 Tacoma models, 2007 to 08 Tundras, and 2005 to 08 Sequoias in a class action lawsuit. Case law can be researched as United States District Court for the Central District of California Case No. 2 15 CV 02171 FMO FFM. Toyota did have a serious problem with rust back in the 1970s and 80s. 
As a man on the street, you do not see too many of the aforementioned trucks with serious rust that you can see from the street without serious examination, so if you are considering one of these trucks, see if it's covered under the extension of warranty agreement within this settlement. You want to cover your own hide. First Generation S10 and S15 GMC Very few of these trucks are still on the road because the drivetrains and wiring were inferior when compared to Japanese trucks from the same era. Unlike the second generation trucks that replaced them, which were really well built, these early models really had nothing good going for them. Chances are if you find one of these for sale, it's already either had a V8 conversion and been completely gone through and redone or at least it's been stored inside and the engine has been rebuilt. Be careful and look under it thoroughly before buying. The bodies were meant to last about 10 days after the warranty expired. Ford 150 these trucks are generally built to last 150,000 miles and then too many things start to break making the truck unmanageable to maintain for most people, who hopefully will buy another Ford. The cam chain tensioners and transmission on certain models fail at that mileage. Repair by replacement engine is the usual recommendation for certain model years. You will see a lot of Ford half-ton trucks that are still running that were built with other engines that last longer, but the rocker panels underneath the cab are all rotten. Quite often that 1998 to 2010 F-150 that is still running has a lot of frame rust if it was used in the Midwest or Northeast portion of the United States. Any state body truck used in construction or landscaping. If you are looking to buy a used truck and you want a state body, make sure the mileage is low if it was used commercially. Carrying the concrete, debris, and dirt used in industry seems to act as a catalyst for serious rust. It makes sense because drywall, Concrete and dirt are very alkaline and anything far from pH balance causes corrosion when it touches metal. Also, the mud that is tossed all over the wheel wells tends to sit there for weeks because the vehicle is in use for long periods of time. All of these situations cause a truck to rust earlier than if used for more mundane purposes. Any dump truck model with high mileage. Many times these trucks are available in two ton and larger sizes. 40 years ago, hardly anybody bought one. Now, it's quite common to see Billy Bob driving one as his daily driver. Due to all the sand and concrete carried in these, these trucks rot quickly. Many times it will only be the dump bed, but the frame and the cab will stay in serviceable condition. Make sure you track the usage thoroughly before you make an offer. Since only the hardiest gas and diesel engines are used in them, these trucks tend to last over 250,000 miles. Just be careful before you buy one. If you enjoyed this video, kindly press the like button. Also don't forget to subscribe with notifications on, so that you don't miss out on videos like this. Thank you for watching.